One, One two, two, three. Got it. This is Senator Gene Yaw. Stay tuned for an exciting behind the scenes tour of the Rusty Rail Brewing Company here in Mifflinburg, Pennsylvania on the next edition of A Conversation with Gene Yaw. This is what we live for. Eric and I are just very proud of the team here. I mean, as of today, we have 90 employees with this new venture and that's, what, that's really what motivates us. That and the fact that a lot of our people get to do things they're passionate about. And uh, what's so much fun is, you know, you look at this building, it's 105 years old. It shined up really nice, you know. It's, it's, it's something that's talked to us. It's sort of like the movie Field of Dreams. We've had these little voices going on for 10 years <laughs> telling us that, you know, we can do something pretty remarkable here. And people ask, why do we do it? We did it for our employees. We really did. And we've been here now 47 years. We still have people that have been with us since the first year. And we wanted them to have something they could enjoy and go to every day. And we did it for the community. We think it's just a great asset to have. You know, Mifflinburg was built on the back of the railroad, which runs right there. It was built on agriculture and industry. We don't have a hospital. We don't have a university. There was a lot of hardworking generations after generations after generations that have built this town, and, and we did this to pay tribute to all those hard workers. I'm with uh, Paul and Eric John, the owners of this great facility, and I'd just like to ask you how it got started, what's the idea behind it, and what do you hope to do for the community with this? Well, it got started, uh, we bought this building about 10 years ago, and <clears throat> boy, we've, we've been in this community for 47 years. We've been blessed with just a great workforce. Um, it's, it's a wonderful little town that we live in, and we wanted to do something for our workers and for the community. Our core business is building houses, and we also have a cabinet facility and a building supply company, but a lot of our, our employees don't get to enjoy those things. They're not all gonna buy a house, they're not all gonna buy a set of cabinets, but they all can come out for dinner, they all can come out for a beer, a glass of wine, and uh, we, wanted, we wanted to do something to reward them. We also wanted to do something for all the generations that have worked in this building. As I said, it's 105 years old, there's been hundreds and thousands of people that have worked here in the past, and, and we kind of want to honor that work ethic that came through this building. We both are big fans of small craft beer, and uh, <laughs> you know the, we enjoy that, so it was a labor of love putting this together. Well, I have a lot of questions. How'd you learn that, about beer? I mean, is it by drinking research? <laughs> <laughs> I actually started home brewing uh, about three years ago because we, we had the thought of doing this back then, so I just wanted to get a feel for what it was like to do it myself and get a taste of it and, and like Paul said we just we went to some other craft breweries and, and liked the you know the atmosphere and thought we could do something with this the same way. Well there are many parts I mean this is more than a brewery you have a restaurant here yep. and what else is? We got the restaurant we have the events hall um, I mean we just that that portion of it has just been amazing how many people and companies are coming to, to see you know to use the different areas we have in this building and, and see it. How many different kind of beers do you brew? Uh, currently we have, I believe, eight, but eventually we'll have as many as 32. That's our goal. And then we'll have a lot of seasonal beers that... Eight might be possible. I don't know about the 32 in a day, but... Anyway. There's a lot of flavors. That's the beauty of craft beer. It's, it's, it's so unique. I mean, it, and it's a little bit, uh, you know, some of the larger beer companies have one flavor, and the, the, the benefit of the craft beer companies is that, that, like wine, they can have hundreds of flavors. So everything has a little subtle difference. All the different hops and malts and barleys that can be used all give them a little different... Uh, flavor of patina, so it's just a lot of fun experimenting. You get to see the, the brew lab, so to speak, which is where we do our myad scientist work and come up with new brews. And um, you know, we've had a lot of fun with all that. Well, we'd like to do that and look at the details. I, I will tell you, this is the first craft brewery that uh, we've ever been looked at or been in. So great, we're happy to have it's you up here. Up to you. <laughs> I am with Rich Schrader, the uh, general manager of uh, Rusty Rail and uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. This is a great facility inside so tell me a little bit about what you do, how you've been involved. Well thanks for coming today. Thank you for being here first. I uh, appreciate that. Um, I've been working on this project with Paul and Eric John, the owners, uh, for about three years now and um, their vision was to repurpose this building and give something back to the community. Uh, so it was a great opportunity for me and um, you know what we've tried to accomplish here is to keep the heritage of the building intact, 
add something that has the um, feel of the rustic brew pub experience that we've all come to love over our you know, last 15, 20 years that we've all been experiencing those. This was an old factory. Um, in the beginning, it was um, used for the undercarriages for the horse and buggies for, um, you know, and back in, way back in the early 1900s, eight, late 1800s, Mifflinburg was the buggy capital of the world yeah. for the horse and buggy. As the um, buggy went, went out of um, production and the automobile came into production, they transitioned over to doing the wooden truck bodies for the uh, Model T Fords and they would bring the bodies in or they would bring the undercarriage in for the automobile then they would build the truck body the wooden truck bodies out of here set them on the frames and then send them out to the dealerships um, so and they, they all came in here by rail they all came in here by rail um, the old rail ran back this way and there was a spur that actually came through the center of our building here this was two buildings at one time the original um, circa on this building is 1911 so they would bring the trains through, they would load up the um, different manufacturing, uh, at that time the automobiles, um, onto those and then send them out to the dealerships. There was a lot of different manufacturing that went on in here besides that, everything from the wooden truck bodies to bowling alleys to um, service vehicles for the war in World War II. Um, cabinetry for a very long time, uh, you know, they ran cabinetry out of here for Yorktown cabinets um, from, I believe, the 40s all the way up until the early 2000s uh, before Paul and Eric purchased the building and decided to repurpose it. So some of the things you see around you, like the old, um, the old chain from the assembly line, we repurposed and welded the links together and created um, the balusters for all the railing. Um, the corrugated metal you see here was used to sheet some of the walls in different areas. We repurposed that for wall coverings. Um, the wood that you see on the stairs here was all repurposed from the floors that we uh, took out of this area to create our open above, above our bar. The um, actual, we can walk around to the bar okay. and uh, I can show you some of that. <clears throat> Um, the, the attention to detail is amazing here. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. noticed that the, the bar footstool is a... The old, that they call that a narrow gauge railroad. Yeah. Uh, the narrow gauge railroad was used along the mountain sides in places like on the west end here where they took the lumber yeah. uh, off the mountain and they would trans transfer that over to the larger railroad that would um, take it out to the river and then ship it out. I don't think you have to worry about that worry now. No. And a lot of the detail, <laughs> attention to detail, our owners have been in the construction business their whole lives. Um, so, you know, I, I would help bring contractors in. We would, we would work on the project and then the owners would come in and, you know, help us tweak everything and make sure that attention to detail. So I have to give them a lot of credit for making sure all those details are always covered you know we took these beams um, here for the bar they're out of the ceiling here so if you see the existing beams that are still here we uh, cut these in half and um, we probably have 20 or 50 gallons to 80 gallons of epoxy on here yeah. that we actually poured and um, did this all by hand ourselves with our guys the uh, face of the bar and the old repurposed wood for that the cabinets um, Legacy Cabinets, which is another business that Paul and Eric owned, actually did all the cabinets for us. So everybody, you know, has had their um, hand in making this happen. Work together. And that's what's beautiful about the whole project to me is that there was a vision in the beginning that started as something between three people, four people, five people that turned into a hundred people. And it's become more than any of us could have ever imagined by having that team that's been involved the whole way. You know, our, our corporate designer, Roxanne Kopelchek, who's not here right now, was a huge influence on the design in here. And, um, you know, Miles Biggs, who's helped with the marketing. And, you know, the RR you see here, um, you know, all the detail, again, you know, Paul and Eric are, are fanatical about the details. So these different murals are something that we like to highlight. You know, they, they pay homage to the history of the building and the history of the town. So some of these are from the historical society. Uh, this particular one right here, I don't know if you can get a shot of that one, but that is the old wooden truck bodies I was talking about. That oh, came straight yeah. out of the catalog from the uh, Ford catalog. Oh. So the artist that we have, Jeff McGreevy, um, took those and just basically gave us a, a, an image of that on the wall here. We have the, another one over here that is uh, from the railroad that was out in the West End here that used to bring the lumber in and out. So that's 
from the historical society as well. And then this one is the building as it may have been in 1911, right when it opened. And uh, we added a few details to that for ourselves. But that photo itself and the Lewisburg Tyrone Railroad are again, you know, they're all historical photos. So, you know, we wanted to stay with that theme throughout. Very nice. But it is Rusty Rail Brewing Company, right? Correct. Okay, so I need to know about the brewing part. Yeah, so we, uh, we've all been fans of brewing. I've been a fan of craft beer for 15 years. Um, when we started this, I, um, I had a friend of mine who you know, I've known for a very long time who had been a brewer for 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we brought him in, um, Paul and Eric got to meet him. We started sampling beers and doing shows in uh, most of 2014, the whole year of 2014. So we went around to different shows all over the place and uh, tried different beers on our small batch brewing system and ended up taking that and ad adapting that to what recipes that we wanted to have uh, for when we opened the restaurant. And we started distributing our beer in January of this year um, on draft only. And then we transitioned that into bottling in Feb March. I would, in Feb late February, early March, we started bottling. And as, as of now, the brewery side of it, uh, we are in around 35 counties and probably 150 accounts. Okay. Okay, so Senator, we're down in the basement right now, which is where our brewery operations take place. Um, this is the area we store a lot of things. We have our grain down here. We have some empty kegs and things of that nature. Um, if you take a peek right in here, this is actually, uh, we call it our brew lab, but this is where we do um, some testing of different things, yeast strains. Um, we, we track our packaging. These, this little system right here is actually um, what we called our pilot system. That's what we started brewing this is what on you started with. out in the parking lot uh, about three years, a little over three years ago. And we went from doing 10 gallons a day to now doing up to 900 gallons a day. So it's still small scale for a craft brewery, but um, for us, the growth has been, you know, amazing. And, you know, in the time that we've been working on this, we're thrilled with where we're at. Are these... Uh this is some of our branding. Okay. Um, these are samples that we track just to sort of uh, for quality control purposes. So we know what went out in the market and what we can, uh, we do testing panels where we come in and test uh, the different samples to make sure that they call it uh, true, to ban true, true, true to brand, uh, to make sure it's true to what we expect the beer to be. So we always want to um, continuously sample and stay on top and it's not a bad perk for the job either to be able to sample beer. We all love that. Just um, this is some of our branding for our, uh, our core brands, which for the uh, production side, we have, um, we have an IPA, we have a pale ale, a blonde ale, and a stout with coffee, an imperial stout with coffee. This is our IPA. That's supposed to be a depiction of yeah. uh, Paul and Eric actually <laughs> <laughs> swinging the hammer into the spike. Driving a rail spike. Right, exactly. This is our blue collar blonde kind of went with a little bit of sort of a uh, Sailor Jerry tattoo, uh, Rosie the Riveter kind of thing yeah. on that. Um, this is our Wolf King Warrior Stout where we partnered up with um, Lycoming College and uh, Warrior One Coffee and added that to our, uh, added it to our Imperial Stout as a promotional item through Lycoming College and um, actually ended up becoming so popular at a show that we decided to put it as a core brand of ours out into the market. Oh, wow. So now we buy and are able to support Warrior One Coffee and their uh, charities. Um, that's that one. And then this pale ale is one of our, this is our first brand, which we uh, wanted to make our flagship, the Trails End Pale Ale, which uh, it, it kind of pays homage to the trail that runs behind. Yeah, that ends. Yeah, at that ends yeah. at the building. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that's been our four core brands. Now, again, as, as Paul said earlier, we have eight to ten brands that we're doing in the pub. Uh, the business model there is we, we, we run these in the pub as different seasonals rotating on and off the taps. And then if something that we really, really like, uh, or that I should say our customers really, really like, um, we will end up transitioning that into a production beer and put it in bottles and send it out to the market. Good. All right. So, okay, let's take you over to the actual brewery where the magic happens over here. Uh, this is our brewery operations here. Um, if you look, we'll, we'll walk over this way um, just to show you 
a uh, few of our guys here. This is Guy McCarty and Jared Hi. Hunt. Hi. Guy handles all the sales out in the uh, Hi, Gene, nice you are. Out nice the market. Hi, Jared's you? handling Jerry. our operations down here. And then we have Michelle Spusens, who's our brewer, and Logan Metzger, who's, this our, is who's the his assistant. Person, right? <laughs> well, Hi, how are you? They've been doing a great job brewing the beer. Um, you know, everybody's been so happy with what the product they've been putting out. And um, this is where they do, this is where they spend their time, is in the brew house. So, um, just a, a quick overview, um, you know, being this is your first brewery. The majority of the production is coming off of these tanks right here. So you have three of these tanks. You have a, a hot liquor tank, a boil kettle, and a mash tun. All of that produces what they call wort. Mm -hmm. The wort then gets transferred to the fermenters, and that's where it becomes beer. And it's then transferred over to the bright tanks where it's stored, carbonated, and ready to either be bottled and or kegged. Um, How long is the fermentation process? Fermentation averages about 14 to 16 days for each beer, uh, depending on the beer that you mm -hmm. have, but for the most part, we stay within those limits. And um, then our bottling area is, is set up over here. Our plans are to expand in the future down into another area in the lower part of the basement. We have expansion capabilities, add some more fermentation, and, and, and move our bottling production what, down what, there. What's the uh, shelf life of your beer? I mean, what's the recommended shelf life? It depends life? on the beer. For the core brands, you're looking at about three months. You'd like to make sure that it's off the shelf and sold by that time. For some of the higher ABV beers, um, our, our core brands are 4.6%. Per, 4 5.4%, 7.2%, and then our Wolf King is over 8%. As you get into the higher ABVs, your shelf life is a little longer. So okay. if you're doing an Imperial Stout or something like that, you might be able to store that for six months if it's 10 or 12% and not have to worry about it. Do you pasteurize your beer? We do not. You don't? No. We okay. filter our beer. Um, we do not pasteurize it. We feel like uh, in the craft beer world, that's something you, you, you don't want to affect the flavor of the beer too much and try to keep it as pure as you can. Um, we filter it um, at this point, but we, we, do, um, we do break our water down and filtration, filter all of our water uh, with a reverse osmosis system. So we break it down to distilled water. That's interesting. Where do you get the water? Is it from the it's, municipal system? It's the or? municipal water, yes. Okay. We get it from the borough of Mifflinburg. Uh, the actual borough of Mifflinburg is their own utilities company. Mm -hmm. So they uh, provide the water to us. Then we run it through the reverse. We have a carbon filter. We run it through a reverse osmosis system, break it down to distilled water, and then we add whatever adjuncts we want to add to it to build each individual brand of beer that we're going to produce. Okay. So. Yeah, over here is, uh, again, yeah, this is the bottling <coughs> line over here. It's a very, very small operation for bottling right now, but we're, we can produce, we can produce quite a bit of beer off of this small system over here in bottles. Uh, this machine is capable of a case a minute of beer. So um, we've added a few smaller things. We have a labeling machine here. We added some rotating tables here to help us um, get the beer into the boxes and palletize it and those, sor those sorts of things. Um, Dirtag Brothers is our local ID distributor. Who, okay. uh, we distribute most of our beer through uh, in this area. And then we have IDs in, uh, we work with LT Brastro in the Wilkes-Barre area. Um, we work with Nittany Beverage up near State College. And we're even out in Erie, Pennsylvania, where we are working with Erie, um, Erie Beer out in Erie, PA. So we're looking at opening up some other ID distributors and expanding our mm -hmm. brewery uh, down in the lower portions of the basement here. We have probably 24,000 square feet right now with the restaurant, the event space, and the um, brewery that we're occupying. And then we have another 50 to 80,000 square feet of expansion space that we can grow into. It's an amazing operation. Started from nothing. Yeah, this is, uh, it's been a once in a lifetime <coughs> opportunity, I think, for all of us here. That's one of the things that everybody that's in here is passionate about beer, passionate about food, people, and just love what they're doing. And well, it's been, the 90 jobs is pretty impressive. Thank you. From going from nothing, I mean, startup and everything, and now having 90 people work here. Yeah, we're very proud. We've got a good team, too. Everybody seems to work well together and is excited, so. What's the uh, wait time when you come in the restaurant? What's um, the busiest it, it, hours? It, you know, it's, uh, the busiest hours are around 6.30 to 7.30, and the wait times average from 45 minutes up to two hours. That's amazing. Um, you know, something that we've focused on is making sure that everybody who's here 
is having the best experience they can have. Um, how far away or where people come from? You know, I've seen people from Ohio, from, you know, out in Erie, PA, um, New Jersey, New York, um, all the other major areas, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia. We've had people from all over the, the northeastern United States and a few people from even out west. Um, for people that have been in town for business and things like that from other parts of the country that um, heard about us on Facebook or, you know, uh, word of mouth and decided to come out this way. This is obviously much more than just a, a brewery or a brewing company. There's no question about that. This is like an experience here. Yeah, that, you're absolutely right. The original business model and the business plan was written for us to be a destination. We wanted to be a destination. So yeah. for the beer, for the food, live music, which we're going to be starting in October, we wanted people to come here and have just what you said, an experience. So when they leave here, they're going to remember the overall experience, and it's going to make everything taste a little better. <laughs> and uh, you know, th that experience, will, they'll tell their friends about it. Um, Paul mentioned to me about the upstairs and the, the pool banquet tables. Oh and, yes, and yes. And I would like to take you guys up there next. I, I mean, I just like to absolutely, see that. absolutely. So, Senator, y'all, we're headed up right now into what we call our game room okay. and into our event banquet space that we have. Uh, so we'll start over here. Um, this is sort of a lounge area. A lot of people when they come in that are on the wait list, we'll encourage them to come up here, hang out in this lounge area and or come over to the game room bar where they can get a drink and wait or play pool, shuffleboard. Uh, we have another one of the old trucks here that was found locally um, that was built out of this building. Um, a lot of what you see here, it's a play on words. We have the game room, a uh, wild game that <laughs> our owner's father, Paul Sr., um, actually is a big game hunter and has been all over the world. And uh, these different mounts are, are um, hunts that he's been on in his life. He wanted to donate something. Um, you know, Paul and Eric, I'll give them all the credit on this room, it was something that they visualized that they wanted to give back to their workers and have a place that people could come up here and hang out and be a little more casual. Um, and it's worked out really well because we've had that, but we've also had the ability for people to come up here and have a beer as they wait for their table in order to dine uh, in the restaurant downstairs. Where did you ever find those pool tables? Those pool tables came from um, a company called Eberhart's, which is out of the uh, Harrisburg-Lancaster area. And they were repurposed. Um, they repurposed these tables for us. They're actual Brunswick tables and um, they're from the same era. We tried to keep everything and all the details, even ta you know, pool tables, shuffleboard, everything we got, we tried to keep within the era of the time that we were trying to stay with. So the late 1800s through the mm -hmm. 20s um, in that time frame. This is kind of a neat piece because we found it in a state sale and um, it was right just one town over. Um, it has the old tag on it, if you can zoom in on that or not, Jason, but that has the old tag on it, it says Mifflinburg Body Company. Wow. This is an actual pickup of the mural. It was in that catalog and the mural I showed you in the beginning. Mm -hmm. This truck body, um, we had this restored. A gentleman uh, named Lenny Krautheim, who does a lot of uh, restoration, uh, helped us to restore this back to its original um, shape. This actually has the engine in it. It runs. We took the oil out of it, but he, <laughs> he got everything running. We actually drove it in here. Um, we have a series of freight elevators that are still in operation, which I'll show you when we go in the kitchen. But we actually drove this truck in here. <laughs> so the amount of equipment that they had on these floors and in this building is amazing. Uh, if you look at some of the photos from the years where they were doing production here and some of the presses and the mills and the lathes and things like that that they had here were tons of weight. Um, so this, this doesn't add up to much compared to some of the manufacturing they used to have in here. I know, I think Paul said about the shuffleboard. This sh that yeah, also is this a again was from uh, the folks out of um, Lancaster area, Everhart's. They, they did this custom for us. Um, had our logo, wow. had our logo put in it. It's a work of art. Yeah, it really is. Um, we did a few of these down in the cage, which is our VIP room. We'll show you a tap room. We did that in the very beginning. We created that room to show people what the vision was for the place. And we'll end there. But um, we had a few of these types of things done down there. And it seemed like a great idea to do that up here as well. This room has become unbelievably popular. This is our, we call it the Pardee room. It's a play on words again. Pardee is a town, uh, an area west of here. Um, where there's a lot of the lumber came out of mm -hmm. there. There's a lot of history in that area. Um, 
we have events in this room. Uh, we've had two events so far. Um, I believe our event manager, Roxanne, has, has uh, at least 80 to 90 events booked already. This space will hold up to 300 people. Uh, one of the things we found in the area was there was a need for a space that could accommodate larger crowds for banquets. And once we, um, once we started talking to people, we had interest for wedding receptions. And then, not that this was in the plan in the beginning, but it really worked into the marketing. Uh, the rustic wedding packages yeah. have become really popular. And so it's just played into um, the popularity of the marketing side of things, and I give Miles a lot of credit for that. Tell me about the murals. This is somebody who's working on one. Yeah, this is Jeff McGreevy. Jeff's our, uh, well, hey, he's Jeff. our resident artist at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call him. So he's been uh, working on, uh, what has it been, Jeff? Is it four or five months now? Yeah. He's been, all the murals you saw downstairs, these are all, again, from Historical Society photos. Uh, Jeff's an amazing artist. The detail that he has on these is incredible. And so, um, He's got a few more to do here. Have you done all these, Jeff? Yes. Yep. And the big ones out there, yep. too? Yeah, the ones downstairs. How long did it take you to do them? The bigger ones were like three weeks each. That's all? <laughs> That's an hour to do. Must work fast. Uh, late nights. <laughs> his attention, to his concentration level is unbelievable. I'm surprised. I'm surprised he even listened to us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Senator, we're down in the first floor kitchen now. This is where all of our production for the dining room is coming out of. Uh, what we're in now is the wait station. So this is set up to have um, all of our dirty dishes come in this way and drop off at our dishwasher. All of the food is headed out in this direction. Uh, we just opened, so we uh, opened at 11, so we've got an active kitchen now. Um, everybody's kind of doing everybody's different tasks. Working. Yeah, everybody's working. Um, you know, every day is pretty busy these days. What's the so, specialty here? Um, we do a little bit of everything. You know, we do a lot of sandwiches and burgers, cheesesteaks. I think our our biggest commitment has been to scratch cooking, preparing things ourselves, um, having them made here. We have a small bakery in the back, smoking our own meats, baking our own breads, doing our own sauces. So a lot of prep work every day to get the product out there, the quality level that we want it. Presentation, presentation on our food is a lot of times not what people are expecting. They come to a brew pub, they're getting a sandwich or a, an entree, and uh, it has a presentation of, of something that's from a higher end restaurant. Yeah. So. The quality of the food, the presentation, the commitment to preparing a lot of those things ourselves is what we focused on. So when we were, I was 10 and he was 5, my father used to bring us to work and give us to a guy named Joe Snook. Who was a and he put you in the man. cage? And when he had to go fix stuff, he'd leave me in there with all the knives and the tools and the saws with my brother. And I'd usually do something really nasty to him. So we were walking through this before it was our maintenance room, none of this was here. And we kind of had this idea, you know, if we were going to do a cage today, the kind that we want to get stuck in and locked in. It, I know what it's going to look like, so we started putting it together. So here's my trivia. <laughs> Any idea what that is? I know it looks like a beer bottle, but... Uh, some of the same things. No, it looks like a gas can. This is an old piece of equipment here, probably a drill press, but after so many years of oiling... Yeah, yeah oiling around it. The oil, it drips in off the filings and the, and the metal shillings and it gets into the wood and you can't get it out. So that's literally oil that's permeated into the wood and it's all over the place. And if you look in this little room here, where we, where we wrote our logo off, that's, that's one of the gentlemen that used to work in the cage. <laughs> and that's really what motivated us to do some of this. I'd just like to say how fascinating this has been. It's been much, much more than I think we ever anticipated that you've done here in Mifflinburg at the Rusty Rail Brewery. I, I, I mean, it, it, it's really a credit to you guys, all of you, and to this area. And, you know, I would just encourage uh, people that are out and about if they want to stop by for a great time. This looks like a good place to make it your destination to come. So, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks.